the name of the Lord. I do pay love our Lord on the day. I knew couple, I pray the Lord of heaven will be with you to the end of your life. I just want to give you a short charge and which is normal in a marriage like this. Number one is being recorded. So immediately after the service, the audio fashion will be available and the video version. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I want to take notice of it. Why? Because as you leave the church today, everything in the world will question your vow. Are you with me? And that question is to ask you, do you mean it? So if you don't mean it, things in the world will want to make your married life devastating. But if you mean it, you confront whatever is asking you and you subdue them and move forward. I have enjoyed marriage since 1993 till date. And uh, the family where your bride come from have been together all their life. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so that shows that marriage can work. We don't want to look at example from uh, abroad or anywhere within us here. There will be people who have been married and they've stayed together enjoying the goodness of God and facing the future. And there are many other younger couples here. You see them dancing with you. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to be reading two scriptures. One from Genesis, the other one from Ephesians. And the title of my message is Follow God in this relationship. Can you tell your wife? Now, wife, tell your husband. Now, everybody, tell you, Praise the Lord. The first scripture I will read is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 2, and verse 15. Genesis chapter, you know the story, but let me read some few, then I'll summarize the rest to save time. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. The scripture says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. You can imagine God just woke up one day created the man, the man woke up, it's like if you are sleeping, you just wake up and they carry you and say, they have built an estate and they give you the estate. That's the, what happened there. If you look at that scripture, you will see that God did not tell that man, I give you this place, be laboring in it. Did he talk about labor there? It's also screened for us to see if you don't have your Bible. God told man in the beginning to tend, to keep. What I want to show you there is that many of the things we sweat upon today were not like that in the beginning. To eat, you sweat. To do something, you suffer. It was not like that in the beginning. It was God that actually walked and handed it over to man. And we were supposed to live in that blessing of tending and keeping, not laboring, not in affliction, not in pain, not in sweating. It was not that. Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2, you can't see anything like labor. It's when you get to Genesis chapter 3, you begin to see labor, sweat, pain. I'm raising this to lay foundation so that you know what I'm going to. I say follow God. When the creator of a thing is abandoned, anything you take, which you have not created, you are going to misuse it. 
the one who created them gave them certain instruction that will make them to continue to live in a world where they will only be tending and keeping. But they felt he was not wise enough. Statistics that we see in the world about marriage tell us that close to 80% of people that are married are not enjoying their marriage. They are enduring it. Are you listening to me? Continue, Sonny. Pay a young be met Johnny no me what to marry like ye non fiara da when jay yanny no marriage in one step come my bad one no alone or your fair at Chibu Quay. Continue, so lay bony. And there is no other thing. You see people that God bring together by His power, they will be fighting. They will be destroying things that God has blessed them with because only one way. They abandon the one who made them couple. They are using their brain. About one and a half years ago, a lady decided she was going to divorce the husband and went to court on her own. But the husband didn't report, did not show up in the court till today. But on that day, the husband went to his working place and changed his nest of kin from the wife. And within the last two months, the, that man died. And the wife, okay, I'm the wife, I'm the wife. If he had, I, I know they had problem, but if he had waited on God and followed God, what he wanted to do is to disentangle herself and do what she liked with her life. But now she's presenting herself as the wife. And they are asking that it appears there is a question mark about it. So I followed them to the register of the university. And the register went to the door and said, the husband has removed you as what? As nest of kin. The husband didn't ask her to go to court, though they were fighting. You know, there are people in your workplace who will push you. Who is that man? Be yourself. That's the word we are now. They'll say, do what you like. Don't do what you like. Oh. Do what God wants you to do. So here, God took man, put him in the garden of Eden. He said, tend it. Let's read further. Verse 16. Then the Lord took the man, put him, that's 15, 16. And the Lord God commanded. Did he say advice? What did God say? What did the Bible say? God commanded him saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you will do what? You will die. And to down, go, go. the one who laid the foundation of all things, the beginning of all beginnings, told them, he don't have so he You know, there was a day God came to Abraham the same way and was talking to him. The Bible said Abraham was laughing. Can you remember? At what time my people say, Along with Abraham, I'm your reward. Say, I will give you. The Bible said Abraham was laughing and said, Oh, that Ismael will live. I tell my Bible, 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 my and he told God, I have tried to help you. I already have a smile for you. So when you are hearing about bomb, terrorists today, he said to Shailen, because he did not follow God. He didn't trust God. And he created problem for all of us that we are battling with. I'm just, it's, it's a sharp message. But I pray your spirit will pick it. And as many of us as are living our life anyhow, may you understand what God is saying today. In the name of Jesus. All the trouble in the world today are traceable to our inability to allow the one who put us here to guide us. Look at how beautiful Nigeria will be. A country that is so rich. As an economist, I can tell you that Nigeria should be one of the best countries in the world. But it can't be. Because we are self-centered. We are tribalistic. 
We are sensationalistic. We are corrupt. I have had meeting at different level of government at my level. I found that an average Nigeria is like a devil. I'm telling you what I know. Many will carry big Bible at workplace. They are instrument of the devil to destroy Nigeria. To afflict us. They are recruited and paid to serve us. But they are there to afflict us. And you tell them they can't hear. So many of our trouble in life is because we can't trust our maker. We can't trust our redeemer. We can't take his word for a law and sell ourselves out to it and follow it. To so God commanded. He wasn't begging them. Follow the, you don't follow, you are dead. He told them the implication. If he didn't say they will die, we say God didn't tell them anything will happen. And you know what happened. Somebody came and told them, you won't die, Abby. And they followed that voice. It's the same drama in our life. As we are dancing now, appreciating God, when we go out, something will be telling you do something that are not godly. Sometimes we tell you to do certain things. Do what God we call bath your lawn. Instead of saying, I am married to Jesus, Satan, leave me alone. I am married to Jesus, I say, leave me alone. My husband is coming to take me away to everlasting hope. We won't say that, we'll be listening to the enemy. So, number one, God gave him a garden. Number two, God gave him a command so that he can keep living in that garden. Number two, verse 18, and the Lord God said, it is not good. I'm showing the favor of God over our life. Are you with me? You will see now. Again, God, he didn't know he needed a wife. Are you with me? He never told God, Daddy, I can't be living in this palace alone. Give me a wife. Oh, no. God himself, again, thought of a wife. Praise the Lord. And he said, and the Lord said, it is no good that this man should be alone. I will make him a ever comparable with him. Actually, today, like you were, alone, if I come about, I should go share your head. You won't have been toiling the way we are toiling to get things. There, you see, it's God that was planning the life of the man he created. When he needed a wife, he was the one working. The only person that enjoyed that among men on the earth was Isaac. If you have read the book of Abraham, when Isaac wanted to marry, Isaac never go shopping for any wife. The grace was too much. This was the, this was the father, the servant of the father. And they were going on the lane of the spirit and the anointing and covenant. And they brought the best wife for him. He just saw the wife, embraced the wife, and enjoyed his life from beginning to the end. Praise the Lord. Why Jacob labored for seven years to marry, Isaac never labored for one minute. Because he entered into the original grace and blessing. May the Lord give you understanding. In the name of Jesus. So, God again thought of a wife for Adam. And actually produce a wife and give him. I now ask, kill all of them. If you can't do it, go 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 man tell you, go go tell all of them. Oh, for any palace, go 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 tell man. Oh, provide there. Oh, to oh to so oh to oh to move away. Oh, there oh to be little lower. Now, a stranger then came in chapter three and told him that all of them are fine. Any oh, to be fine. I go ni so ko ko man for work. Just one. Imagine the number of mangoes, different type of mango, different type of orange, different type of vegetable that God created that were represented in that garden. Imagine the type of tuba that is in the world. You understand what I'm saying? Just one. Honor me with this. Anytime you get there, remember I'm your God. And the devil inspired a man consented and went for it. Now, where am I going today? 
God has set you both of you today. The day you were born, Tola didn't know. The day Tola was born, you didn't know. But at your traffic lane, you cross one another's path. You discover yourself. And you are coming to one another's life as a gift. Or can you buy your husband Tola with money? Are you the one who sent him to school? My brother, can you buy her? You are the one who sent her to school? Who nurtured her to the level? You are carrying a gift home. The young we brought, can that buy a man? Praise the Lord. So you are a gift from God to one another. What are you to one another? Gift. And when they give us a gift, it's better to cherish that gift. It's better to honor the gift. In the name of the one who gave. Are you with me? Ah, that the milofu mini kini. Wama tojue. Remember what I'm telling you today. When you feel your wife didn't behave well or your man didn't do what he's do, remember he was a gift. You didn't labor for it. If it's something you bought, you may say, ah, I spent one billion. You didn't. But yeah, you are you with me? There was a woman that complained to me that imagine walk like it. But I want a woman called my wife one day and was telling my wife, We all call we look out money. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you what I've seen on earth. Only look out man, look on. And my wife is like, Look out man, you better. Chio Maku Ganaria, Wabenle. You know, many times the devil puts strange desires in our hearts. And we want to pursue it rather than be satisfied with the gift God has given us. And if you can improve on that gift, you nurture the gift and bring it up and keep praising the one who gave you. In And that's why some won't have rest until the day they die. May the Lord give you grace. To find satisfaction in one another. Amen. To cherish one another. Amen. Because we are creating so if you are a young lady, think well. Think well and think right. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So God gave instruction. The summary here is that Adam and Eve didn't follow it. Are you with me? Follow God in your marriage. You see me repeating it? What do I say you should do? Don't follow man. Follow who? Don't even follow pastor. I'm part of Buruku Alayei. Follow God. I have not seen a man who make a covenant to follow God who ever failed. I was born by a mother who said Eko Amame all her life. And from that Eko Amame, a professor was produced. A pastor was produced. Am I communicating? And a president and chairman of many committees today was produced. Why? The only thing I did different among the children of my mother is I followed the Lord. Follow God. When you follow God in marriage, you don't have problem. I can tell you that. When myself and my wife are arguing over anything, 
I'm saying, if you don't agree with me, oh yeah, let's try what you have said. Okay. And I thought, so, there are some women that have come to me, oh, my husband beat me. I said, how did he get you to beat you? If you know that somebody's head is not correct and wants to beat you, what did you do? <laughs> you should run away. But he said, my friend, you me. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, what loom? It's over to be. Yeah, it's to be. Okay. I keep teaching them the doctrine of peace. The doctrine of peace is if I have a colleague now that says he wants to fight me, oh boy, kilo de tafelja. I'm sorry. Apologize. Even when I know I'm not guilty, will he fight me? There is no human being that we ever fight when one person is not ready to fight. Am I communicating? I am sorry. I didn't know what I said. We annoy you. Just don't mind me. Your majesty. Are you with me? And that's what I teach women. If you see a man who is hungry, when he's hungry, you, why be kasasi? Don't turn yourself to a punching bag in the hand of somebody. I want to tell you today, there is nobody in life if somebody wants to fight you who is not ready to fight, that, we, that we, there will be a fight established. But in most cases, as the other one is going on fire, the second one is going on fire. I do understand it. Until one day, somebody is leaving my house in Modakeke. A tenant went, beat him up. He was in the bus cutter. The tenant was in the main house. On beating her up, instead of her not touching them, just report. She also tried to use his name, eh? tell them the eyes, and do a little fight. So I called the police to arrest the tenant for beating my spiritual daughter that I put in the bus cutter. When they got to the police, they said they should make statement. So the other woman said, I beat her through it, but she also beat me. Are you with me? And they asked the girl that I went to take police for, did you beat her? He said, yes, I also, uh, they said it's too fighting. That was the end. Anytime somebody wants to fight you and you want to fight back, what did you do fighting? So there is no innocent person among both of you. So when people come, you want to say this one is a, a mad person. That one wants to, you see a man struggling to say, Yawomi is shuni. Another girl, in your but once you are able to, in your marriage, as you go on, follow God. And what should you follow? Ephesians chapter 5. Let's look at what you should follow in specific time. The book of Ephesians chapter 5. That scripture remains forever eternal. But people don't want it. I've seen somebody who told me, buy the Bible. If you get solution to your problem in the Bible, you say, no, I know what is in the Bible. I don't want that Bible. He said, does not want God's word to come into the matter. They want to fight to finish. I read it. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22. Say, wives, submit to your own husband. As what? Everybody as what? Say, okay. Statement in here, like Bara. If they have said, wives, submit, they didn't describe it. It's a different matter. As to the Lord, can get me alone. I want to talk with Lord Bamu. I will be no fake boy any campus. All those big deal that they don't want to hear that. Tell alone. Oh, come you so long on you. Only we are here, Mung Betty. Me. He didn't say it's your. He said submit to him as what? As your Lord. He's trying to set up a structure. God was trying to do what? Set up a structure to my jacko can wa bale kaye wa dara kogu e han la ye wa. So he described it the way you submit to Jesus, submit to your husband. And verse 23 For the husband is the head, that's God's thinking. Brain or lungs or kwe or kwa wani kinyo. 
Olori Iwa. As also Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of what? Of the body. Praise the Lord. Very simple illustration. Make up your mind. I'm showing you what to follow about God now. Follow this. Tola, this concern you. I know you are a great child. Intelligent and good. But still listening to God. To be the best. Amen. The Lord will help you. So submit to your husband as if he's your Lord. See him as your head and honor him as so. When anybody ridicule your husband, tell them that's my gold. Amen. Because the husband does not belong to them, they can't know the value. But if you join them, yeah, you then team, you will launch here. That is your gold. That's your gift. And it's from the Lord. May the Lord help you. Amen. Then verse 24 to the man now. He said, therefore, just as the church, sorry, she's still talking about what? Just as the church is subject to Christ, so let wife be to their own husband. In what? Everything. 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 So I stop there. 25, my brother. He said, husband, love your wife. Just as Christ also what? Love the church. And do what? So the what? okay, love your wife. You know love can be ambiguous. But he said, as Christ loved the church and did what? And died. He said, gave. Gave his life. When you see a man so far you will know. Because if I mean what I just move back on now, what that fury of air and see what. Atu fa wa mara wo mo ni na kuna o wo gbo lo titi ni gba tun mo de o tun celebrate oni ko lo mo pa ka o kan ma wa so to to fun en to ti gbo to ye laye o ti o ti run danu o baba ni e ma mo bo again bring bring game oya oya je ka ma celebrate omo yi ti so nu abi asiri o ti ku o ti ti jinde they started celebrate that's why the older brother ti o lo because fe inu bi Making it to me late. If you're alone, I'm feeling I'm better. If it's you, make sense. Can you make? make sense. That's the love that makes you love somebody that's unlovable. That's the love of Christ, which they are telling us here. Ah, what would I make to say I don't want again? When you are loving, there will be no point you get to in life as you are still living that just say I don't want you again. No point. I tell people there is no end of the road with Jesus. No end of the road. There is nothing, there is no place you can be. I'll say, ah, no, I can't do anything with this one again. Because he actually left heaven to come and meet us in our mess. And what God wants you in marriage is to pick yourself where you are and begin to work on one another. He said he picked the church and was trying to put the church together so that it would become a bride without wrinkle. Uh, do you hear that? Working on your wife to be what you want. We want what we don't work on. That's why immediately after marriage, many couples begin to fight. Ah, me tell you, I will mean little by. Are you with me? Mamaja. Instead of saying, ah, how will I like make her what? Better. I went into a couple's home about three weeks ago to settle quarrel for them. And I told the husband, the husband is about 20 years older than the wife. When they got married. You know, and I told the husband then, because I was party to the wedding, I told him, Oh my crazy couple, uh, they level because the way you are thinking is not the way she will be thinking. I told him. Now that is now manifesting after 15 years. And so, and I said, eight years into marriage, brother, was your husband, was your wife ever talking like this? So he said, No, hey, you have made her something else. 
you have turned her to somebody who may never respect you if you are not careful. Because even then, I know the Ogaloman Kwe Okwe Oga, because the husband was actually a lecturer. And that word is still Oga, Oga, Ogani. But now, Oga Jelo. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm showing you live experience. I had to call the man. So the day the man came to report to me, he wrote something down. My wife is always late to prepare food. But I say, "Mbolo bolo tira ye to tin ko gbugbele. Si gbugbe ese ya wo e lo ko sile yi. Anu ese mi. O le fe ni kankan to ma ba gbe pelu to nko yi o." Before I went to I told him, "If you are thinking like this, you can never make a success of home. Home is not meant for people who are thinking too deep. It's meant for people can make fun of anything. Good home." And Joe Ring can tell me in some way, my Renny, where you are Mudupe. Are you with me? If you are thinking too much, yeah, we'll take a bone jelly, we'll call it, we'll call it a bone jelly, we'll let you call it. Ah, and Toma Pai Loco Sino, because also my late Lola. Until the day you will see Christ, that will continue. Because you I didn't marry a perfect person. Every point he wrote down were useless points. Well, just thinking to himself, and I told him, if you want to live long, stop writing offense down. Because I needed the book where Jesus is writing his own. He couldn't produce one. Praise the Lord. So people who live in the home should be child like that. That's why we say, and you back by job alone be on kere, it's about all that God has in plan for our life. Until we are childlike. Where you can freely forgive. Where you don't have memory of the trouble that happened here that you are facing your future. Many people who fail yesterday, they commit suicide today because they can't forget the past and face their future. So you have to be a child. And what I've seen a child is to buy no more to what to be to share it You can't call it a common of when no melan and a minja ten a minja because in the common kicker by doing a biscuit and John Jeloni Lotuku. Praise the Lord. So be a child, be childlike. Handle your wife in love and remember the love of Christ. I tell people marriage is not sustained by sex, sexual love, corny. This Bible did not talk about sexual love. It's talking about Christ's love, agape love. Of course, you run your home with sex because it stabilizes you as a man, keeps you. But home is not sustained by it. It's sustained by the love of Christ. Am I communicating? It's the love of Christ that will make you a better manager. It will make you to better appreciate why you should stay with your wife and never touch any other woman. I've lectured in university now for 30 years by the grace of God. And I've trained ladies about eight to PhD level. Some of them are director in First Bank and some bank in Zenith Bank. People have trained in this university. And I've ensured that none of them were defied in my hand. I'm telling you the truth. Are you with me? So, make up your mind to follow the Lord. It's, it's, making, it's not that I was not tempted. I once had a master student to match in this course, put it and I said, Lata be table by after my face come in lesson. And one day I told her, You are my student, you are not my girlfriend. Because Mumma Bori and I had to educate her. You are my student, and you are like my younger sister, even if I don't have a daughter. But I have a daughter too. I see you as my daughter. You have not been given to me for sex. I've been given to build and mentor you. That's the heart. You know, sometimes when you see people on the street, you see something else. But when you see with the eyes of God, you see what you should see. May the Lord give you understanding. So, where I'm going is that you will be tempted. Your colleague will tempt you. At work, even in the church. I teach them when you are in unit and you are working with opposite sex. Immediately, intentionally for Munu Elara. 
You will lose so quick, sorry. You go back home to go and, to go and suck your own. Am I communicating? communicating? We are talking about marriage. And I'm being very frank. I'm saying something that is holy. Something that can preserve us. Am I communicating? I'm telling you realities. About this, she said, come, come, Once she's supposed to say, eh, thing that can provoke and make your sin go away may happen. But when you have decided, I've made up my mind to follow the Lord. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I love to see my Jesus someday. Hallelujah. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I love to see my Jesus someday. Amen. So make up your mind. Anything you don't take a decision on, you will never have a stand. But once you have taken a decision, this is what I want to do with this, it guides your steps. Even when you want to be real, you remember your decision, it helps you to fall in the right path. May the Lord help you. So what am I saying today? Submit to God in your marriage. Number two, allow God to rule and direct you. And don't listen to the voice of the enemy. What did I say you should not do? Adam listened to the voice of the enemy and they crashed out. Don't listen. There are people, the enemy can come like a human being. Be mishen dikwe lu ya womire. Be mishen hand wo komire. I won't do my own the way somebody is doing his own. Are you with me? The Lord will help you. I'm stopping there. I believe God has blessed all of you. Think about that word of God. If you are already married. And if you are not married, God is preparing you for your future. Think about it. May the Lord help you in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? I decree the word you have heard today will guide your life. It will direct your path. The mighty God will surround you with his presence. He will keep you. Your marriage shall be a blessing. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout a very loud hallelujah. Shout a winning hallelujah.